Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we discovered some of the weird things that are happening at Whirlberry Juxta Mare, but there should be a lot more to discover. So, let's go back in uh, in just a minute. First, I want to inquire about the lottery. There's no indication as to when it'll next be held. Is it at the whim of the board authorities? This is the, the lottery to allow people inside. The queue snakes across the lip of the docks like an umbilical cord, or a garland. Scalpers bark temptations, promising expedited access. Vendors patrol the undulations of the line, offering drinks, snacks, anything to spare the mind from the doldrums. Finally, a woman in tattered morning attire answers. It's every fortnight, more or less. You want to be near the front. They only give out a few passes. Don't want to dilute the quality of the clientele, I hear. It appears you'll have to come back later if you want to get in via the Pauper's Pass. That's yet another biological term. Remember all the biological, like, intestinal, body part, cilia, vis... vis... visly? Something like that? And, uh, now it talks about an umbilical cord. The Q snakes across the lip of the docks like an umbilical cord. Let's go back in. Mm, let's go with fabulous footwear this time. Of all the finery on display, the footwear is possibly the most avant-garde, with fashions that border on ludicrous. Exciting. We're going to have a different assistant yet again. Oh, actually, no assistant this time. It is a couturier who goes to his knees, latticing your foot between his long fingers. In the frame of his black-on-black -black eyes, your reflection is that of a stranger's, wild and otherworldly. A personal touch, is all he says. The couturier does not permit you to rise, nor does he allow you to pick your shoes. Instead, he ferries you options to sift through. High heels, sensible clogs, equestrian boots in the softest leather, open-toed slippers, sandals teased together from gold wires. And then this last part is the same as always. Ooh, go to the office of the Bureau of Entertainments. Here you will be able to betray the cult and forge a different alliance. Just entering the office is not a betrayal, however. Okay, so who do I want to team up with? The cult that I don't know much about, but they're literally called a cult? Um, or the Bureau of Entertainments, which I hate? Not like an either option. <laughs> Slide across to the off-season. Well, let's at least go to the office. It's perched on the lip of the boardwalk, so close to the beach that its rails almost touch the wind-blasted pebbles. Oh, how beautiful. Chandeliers dripping with diamonds. Gilt limed cornices of marble. Baroque uh, atria so magnificent it could drive one to tears, all leading to a sumptuous little office, its walls painted gold by candle flame. The toy maker, who looks like an amber cast cousin to the couturier, sits at the desk, mending plush toys. He glances up. If you're here to assist, you may speak with me. Speak with them, offer to help, or return. Let's, let's speak with them. Talk of the cult, of the state of the port, of how you can assist the authorities. I'm not going to assist the authorities. Fuck the authorities. <laughs> Do I help a cult just to spite the authorities? <laughs> Reports tell me you were with the cult, but not of the cult. The toy maker sutures the teddy bear's black button eye in place. That sermon caused a fuss. He spits the word like it was a jag of sharp bone. In the off-season, people are taking risks. People are dying. So very wasteful. He tilts his head like a sparrow. We have to protect our working class. 
they dwell in the off-season and mustn't be disturbed. Their work then keeps this era of whirlberry pristine. They stand between our guests and untoward a horror. Bureau officials hover nearby. The officials of the Bureau of Entertainments are teeth and the gleam of brass buttons. No warmth at all. They do not trust you. Well, I think that's the end of our conversation. I'm not helping you. You abscond from the office and scurry away to the commercial clamor whirlberry juxtamere. Let's see. There's no point in doing these things that I've already done before, right? So let's wander onwards. Come to the wilds of a rubbery lump cellar. No, we've already done that. Let's keep going. So I'm probably not going to notice anything weird happening, right? Because I guess we already kind of... We didn't really figure it out, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything more to do with that. Timely? No, we've done that. I'm going to keep wandering onwards, just in case there's something special. No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, let's go to the off-season. It bleeds from your teeth, the story that grants you passage. Guilt, rinded, and sour. That's the savage secret that we're using to go there. You tell a passerby a story they'd not expected. Something raw, profoundly and audaciously private. They gasp and the air jumps. Arises into a door like a wicker tunnel strung with fairy lights. You dash through and the air feels membranous, stinks of burning wire. It is a wall of mucus, two feet thick, and it calls your eye in oil-slick rainbows. Wait, so telling something extremely surprising and startling to somebody, the gasp in the air jumps arises into a door like a wicker tunnel strung with fairy lights. So why did just telling them something so surprising and upsetting open the way to the off season? Is it like anything that's... Anything that's... So surprising or startling kind of breaks through the illusion a bit I guess okay well I guess I'm gonna try to help the colt go for a walk along the beach go visit the colt agree to a request Recruit for the cult. The bedraggled parson sighs. They're so lonely, all of them. Empty but for the grief in their ribs. If only they'd come here. Find them, he burbles. Find them. Find the lonely, the broken-hearted, the barely breathing, the ones who'd think this port could ever save them. Find them. Tell them about they who must grieve about us, about how love can turn in the heart like a key and open the soul to the universe. Speak to them of change. Tell them. Tell them. The words seep from, from the bedraggled parson, tie themselves into gibberish, nonsense sounds like a spill of cold water on glass. For minutes he is inchoate. Then, you need clothes. The cultists cram you into second-hand finery, shabby but serviceable. Now you're suitably attired, they bundle you across the off-season and through a door to Whirlbury. The membrane blocking it shivers and twitches, reluctantly allowing you to pass through. Time tingles on your skin for several minutes after your arrival. They seek new blood from Whirlbury Juxtamare. Hmm, <laughs> I had an idea, by the way. You know the whole, your clothes are constantly being, <laughs> like worn away and then we have all this like biological stuff and going through tunnels and intestines and stuff it's like we're inside of a a creature what if all the clothes are being eaten away because we're basically being 
slowly digested. Um, looks like we can gather members a lot of different ways. This one requires hearts. This one requires two sky stories, two salons, two gossip. No amount of finery is enough to hide the grief weighing from their lashes. These poor souls must hear your words. Let's do this one. I don't want to take this 60% roll. Grief weighs from their lashes. These poor souls will be persuaded if only you can make them listen. You'll need to start with enthralling tales, then drop to the personal. A man, a woman, teenagers, lanky as hounds, a couple too old for the weight of their years. They listen to the sutras and scriptures of transformation you repeat. Their entire bodies poured into the act. Something in the words sing to them. And one by one, they say yes, yes, and yes again, discreet in their reverence. You give them directions to the cult's headquarters and pats on the shoulders. They receive your attention with the gratitude of children. Return to the church in the off-season for your reward. Back to the off-season. Visit the cult. Report the results of your recruitment mission. The bedraggled parson will likely wish to be notified of your success. Thank you, says the bedraggled parson, tone milk mild. He gestures, an inflection of the hand that draws the eye to a swath of new faces, each tendril-haired, paraffin pale and without expression. Then one laughs jerkily, fingers picking at their chewed down hems and it becomes clear who they are. They who must grieve is soothed by their presence, as they are by their contact with a numinous a susurrant echo perishes repeating his every word. Man, I really shouldn't be helping this cult, but I also really want to know what happens. <laughs> hmm. By the way, they who must grieve. Is that at all related to the enemies called the Grievers, the Eaters of Distance? I think they were called the Grievers in Eleutheria. The cult has another task for you. Agree to visit the Avid Horizon. Okay, what do you want me to do there? Not enough, not enough, the bedraggled parson warbles. They need more. We need more. He unrolls sheets of vellum. Oh, somebody's doing work in the floor above me, by the way, if you can hear that noise. He enrolls sheets of vellum, their surfaces vernix slick and intaglioed with elegant, if mildly tentacular, handwriting. My poor, poor children. They are unhappy. They listen, but they do not understand. They cannot understand. They are deafened by their own grief, broken, bent to the noise of their own hearts. I cannot reach them. The bedraggled parson shakes his head as he offers you the stack of paper. Take these to the Avid Horizon. Find the displeased. They might assist my flock. Find these guides, these psychopomps of petty suffering. Give them these and ask them to come here. So the displeased, that's one of the three colts in the quiet sea? Back to the beach. Do I want to piss off the workers here? <laughs> uh, is there much of a reason to? I forgot what they did. Feed the lanes like... Oh, that raises my terror. Gives me one sky story and a tale of terror. Uh, let's go back to the touristy part of Worldberry. So I guess there's nothing more to do here. It's just helping the cult is really all there is to do at this point. But I might as well try to reduce my terror. Take no donkey ride's not a good one. It coughs up tumors. <laughs> um, stop at a charming tea room. Yeah, that reduced my terror.
I don't think I want to eat rubbery lumps. Is that about all I can do? Let's wander onwards. I don't want a donkey ride. I don't want that. I don't want that. Wander onwards. Okay, let's just leave. I think it's time to finally leave Whirlberry Juxtamare for now. They have a bargain, though. The shady sale of an unlikely amount of tea. What a lot of tea. Why is this scarred gentleman selling it so cheap? He picks at his teeth. Do you want to ask questions, or do you want to buy a load of cheap tea that may or may not have recently been used to conceal other substances of less certain legality? I hope none of it's leached into the tea. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to buy that because I want to buy more fuel. Nine fuel, ten supplies. That should do. I don't believe there's any more ports in Albion, most likely, but there is a pretty big swath here of unexplored area. Everywhere else is like, you know, there's probably not much, if anything, there or there or there, although there might be. But there could be something big here. Oh, and the Avid Horizon is just right up there. Yeah, let's go, let's go like here. Let's go down here and then go counterclockwise to the Avid Horizon. Exploring this whole place along the way. Can I go through here? Whoops, didn't mean to do that, sorry. Oh. I thought I could. Uh, I can go over this. Yes, okay. <laughs> Whoopsie. Crew crowd the windows, peering nervously into the mists. Yeah, look at these mists, my god. Roiling, boiling mists. Wait, why is my terror going up? What? It's just from being in the mist? Oh, what the fuck is... Yeah! What the hell is that? What in the fuck? It's not even listed on the map? Is it still there? Okay, my turret. Eh. Eh. I'm scared he's gonna pop up again. Are you a guest or something? You're moving kind of weirdly. I'm scared of this whole damn place that another one's gonna pop up. Fuck. Yep, you are. Okay. Whew. Oh no, I thought I ah, I thought I got it. One more hit should do. There we go. Whew. Wow, that hurt a lot actually. 
Yeah, I hate fighting guests. They're always so just unpredictable and fast moving and their weapons hurt a lot. Salvage scrap to repair. Yield a little bit. Ten hole. So, yeah, how about that eye, huh? Is it just gone? The repentant devil looks thoughtful. We could have fun here. His definition might not match yours. <laughs> I think the eye's just gone. There's something ghastly over here on the map. Let's see what it is. It's probably just a, a weft of time. Yes. Ah, just some supplies. Let's go a little bit more south. the soothing sounds of someone drilling above me. Alright, that's Stonehenge over there. Hmm. They took hours at Stonehenge. I have hours. Maybe we should just take a quick pop over there, you know? Just a pop over to Stonehenge. That was terrible aiming. <laughs> Broadside. Heat. A crewman yelps. He swears he saw something stir in the mists below. I'm sure you did. Mm, search for survivors. Right, a missing one crew member. Yeah. You find a cap and barricade it from within. Holds a crewman who seems lucid. I'll gain terror if I take him right. 48%. No. Let's lose terror. Especially since I'm about to go to a horror. So how about that eye, huh? Is that related to World Bear Jack's Demare? The fog? Was it an enemy? It disappeared for good? So like, what's up with that? Oh god. There's another one. Oh, it's the other one isn't a senior, though.
cover sheaves of parchment. Yeah, let's do that one. Two scraps of it. Two, two scraps. Two scraps of ancient knowledge. And we had a marauder and a normal scribe down here. It seemed like the scribe was like caught in the weft of time or something. I wonder if... Yeah. Are they stuck in it? Do they interact with it in some way? They're behaving weirdly, so maybe they are kind of stuck in it or something. Let's just ignore them. Like, how am I even going to get the loot without going into the weft of time if I kill them in there? Whisper a sky story to the tallest stone. Let's do that again. Success this time. I gained a crew? Wait, what? You lean your head against the cold rock and murmur a tale of adventure to a hollow in the stone. It doesn't take long. You pull back from the menu. The air hangs still. Noth Someone swears. A stranger staggers towards you from between two stones. Their clothes are outdated, the fashion several years old. They head towards you, but you are not the captain they expected. The new arrival is eager to board your locomotive. They'll take any role just to get away. Oh my god, that is so cool. Right, the beings that live here are the beings that live between seconds, is I think what they were called. So they somehow got stuck here in time. From a couple years ago. Step inside the ring of stones. Gift a barrel of hours to the beings that live between seconds. They accepted the last barrel so eagerly. Yeah, anything different? Hmm, this is different, actually. Last time they gave me one cask, this time they gave me two. And let's read this. The translucent beings turn towards you in unison. As you hoist the barrel onto the altar, their heads arch over it. Even as you are prying off the lid, they reach boneless limbs towards the geodes inside. Tenderly, the hours are passed out, are pressed to feather-robed breasts. There are not enough to go around. A keening goes up from two. Their black eyes fix on you balefully before turning away. Another being spills a shimmer of bright gemstones, this time a torrent of them, into your arms. It turns back to the altar. You are forgotten. Hmm. Getting a bigger reward, but some of them were really unhappy with me. I feel like if I keep giving them, like, maybe I'm making something bad happen by giving them these hours. But that is a huge reward. Two casks, some Navaratine gemstones? If I just straight sell them, that's like almost a thousand right there. And if you do a prospect or something, that's way more. Let's leave. Damn, lots of whiffs of time around here. Okay, so counterclockwise. Up towards the Avatar Horizon. Mm hmm? What is that? Huh. I. Okay. I didn't expect that. What is that? That's definitely solid. <laughs> oh. You are not where you thought you were. The sky is wrong. Was it a trick of the mists? Has the wind carried you astray? Have the heavens themselves turned on their axis? Press on or double back. Double back. This will cost fuel and time. You pick your way back across the sky while the hours tick by and your crew grow fretful. Eventually your chart and your surroundings align again. You continue your wary journey. Two fuel and we gain terror. I'm just trying to think, like have I heard any other ports been mentioned? What could this be? Oh, 
Perdurance. Ah, I never found Perdurance. I forgot about that place. Sometimes I blend things in my mind between Albion and, and Eleutheria. I can confirm. Perdurance is not in Eleutheria. Surprise. I don't know why I went to that map. What do we have to do here? I'm sure we have some quest, right? A party blows stairs. Tonight the service bells from above, from above stairs, go ignored. Let's do that. Take tea with butlers and maids. Only the finest quality, carefully stolen from upstairs. Oh, that reduced our terror by a lot. Yeah, so we've done that before. I'm not going to read it. Oh, and surprise, they have a bargain of crockery. Maybe they didn't just use some of that crockery, but they stole it and they're selling it. <laughs> Good on them. Okay, yes, is there something in particular to do here? Port report. I have a million invitations. Talk to the exasperated butler. Uh, we've talked to them before. That's just like when you first come to this place, what is this place all about? Okay, well, I have 15 invitations. Let's go into the half-light mask. <clears throat> yes, this is one thing. The counselor... No, not the counselor's daughter. The, um... Macabre... What was her name? I don't remember exactly, but they're a person from the mausoleum. They wanted me to find their daughter. They're one of the deathless. Find the presumptuous heiress. She must be here somewhere, but can you find her? Macabre counselor commissioned you to find and free her daughter, the presumptuous heiress. Or heiress. First, you'll need to find her among the debutantes. Either ask around or search the dining hall. Let's search. Hmm, actually. 72% chance of success. Yeah, let's do that. Let's search. Let's use my eyes. Use my analytical brain. The macabre counselor provided you with a fulsome description, several charcoal sketches, and a lock of hair. Unfortunately, almost everyone here is young, comely, and slavishly contemporary with current fashions. There she is. Her mass of dark brown curls is set off with a spray of curving blue-black feathers so high they scrape the low ceiling. She leans on a grand piano, talking to the pianist, a lady of comparable build with similar brown curls and identical chin and matching eyes. They could be sisters. Oh, apparently the macabre counselor has two daughters. She said nothing of this. No doubt it will prove to be a complication. There are too many people nearby to speak with either sister discreetly, but in the evening there will be a ball. Perhaps you'll have a chance then. Move onwards. Right, so I can't talk with them right now. I gotta wait till the ball. In the meantime... Try to gain favor with the servants. 33% chance of success. Terrible. Let's do it. Damn. You were lucky enough to be served by the exasperated butler himself. You assure him that the service has been impeccable and he glows with pride. He promises to ensure that you are served only the very best brandy and port after the dessert course. Wasted on the debutantes anyway, he confides with a glance over his shoulder. When you drink nothing but the best, you lose the ability to appreciate it. Onwards. Okay, now we can talk. Dance with a presumptuous heiress. She favors the polka. Alas. The presumptuous heiress is everything you expected in a dance partner. Demanding, joyful, and a touch too exuberant for propriety. Her attention is only partially on you, and only very peripherally on the steps of the dance. 
Instead, she waves at friends across the ballroom and whispers snatches of conversation as they pass close by. Between mincing steps interspersed with quick turns in double time, you manage to ask your questions. Ask her to leave with you. Tell her about her mother's commission. Lack-witted in the extreme. For all her frivolity, the presumptuous heiress can summon a thunderous frown when the moment demands it. Leave without my poor, luckless sister? I've never heard such base cowardice. She continues for some time, casting imp imprecations on her mother, her plan, and your own involvement. The idea is lack-witted in the extreme, even for Mama. I would rather rot here. She plucks a crudité from a passing silver platter and looks for a servant to refill her champagne. As expected, a complication. The macabre counselor told you she has an agent in position at Perdurance to assist you. You better find them and seek advice. Uh, how do I... How do I do that? Well, in the meantime, let's dance with the luckless sister. A country dance. You'll have to watch your feet. The luckless sister is light on her feet with a graceful tread. Her curls escape her pins as she twirls, gleaming a dark bronze in the gaslight. She looks very much like her sister as she dances, the occasional anxious line in her face smoothing over with the abandon of youth. Still, there's a watchfulness about her even as you clasp hands and smile. You must seize your moments for speech somehow. You can drive. Ask her about her family. Investigate her opinions of the presumptive heiress and the macabre counselor. The luckless sister is thoughtful where her sister is pleasingly frivolous and considered when her sister is untroubled. You gently steer the conversation in the direction of her sister, probing for resentments or jealousies. You find none. It's only when you mention the matter of mothers that the luckless sister's quiet charm falters. The one true pleasure of this awful place is that I will likely never see her again. Awful place? You look around at the laughing dancers in their shimmering finery, at the crystal decanters dark with wine, the window's evening blaze caught and refracted in the shining chandeliers. Yeah, I don't remember where we heard it, but remember... Somewhere quite a while ago, we heard some, I guess a rumor basically, that this place is imprisoning people. It's not what it appears, much like a lot of the places in the sunless skies. So, probably nowhere near as good as it looks. Well, if they don't want to go back to their mother, I'm not going to force them. Explain her mother's commission. Would she perhaps be willing to convince her sister to leave Perdurance with you tonight? The luckless sister's laugh startles a nearby chaperone. He gives you a stern look, no doubt suspecting you of nefarious levities. Once her amusement subsides, she refuses. If I truly thought that would be best for my sister, I would help you. My mother would only entangle her in schemes and plots. My sister's ill-suited to a life of intrigue and suspicion. She is not surprised that her mother would abandon her here, but nor does she seem inclined to aid you. You will need some form of leverage. Mm. I don't think I want to bring them back, but also at the same time, we've heard that this place is horrible too, so... Uh, uh. It's not like it's a great thing to leave them here. The song ends. You part ways from the luckless sister. She returns to her position at the edge of the ballroom. Okay, they have an agent here I'm supposed to talk to. Where? <laughs> Maybe I'll dance with a presumptive heiress again. Do we have something new to talk about? No, we don't. Let's try to charm the servants again. Failure. The half 
half-light mask is over. A servant tugs at your sleeve. You have endeared yourself to those who work below stairs. You end the day closer to the servants than the debutantes. The servants discreetly share their admiration for your kindness and charm. You try not to let it go too much to your head. There's very little competition in the field of kindness to servants here. You leave richer in gossip and soothed by the distractions of the half-light mask. Two salons do gossip and our terrace fallen. So yeah, that's not related to the agent. Talk to the exasperated butler. Are you the agent? No. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. When I return, we're going to try to figure out this uh, deathless and two daughters thing. See if we can find a good solution. And then, after that, head from Perdurance up counterclockwise to the Avid Horizon to do the cult thing for Whirlberry Juxtamare. <laughs>